This is a stock research agent, which is different from a lot of other stock research agent out there because it uses deep agents. This concept is kind of borrowed from cloud code, which needs to have a really nice process of searching for code and then implementing that code and having other agents act on its behalf to not center everything around that specific AI agent. And what I'm mentioning here, I will draw inside of XCollyDraw just for us to get a sense of what I'm talking about. Let's say that this is the entire context window. If the AI agent, so let me place AI agent up here, were have all of the prompt in here. So let's suppose we threw all the context, so an entire page of let's say research agent.py. This entire page of 280 lines of code would be sent in here. This is clearly not efficient, not for code and not even for some stock evaluation. So you have a lot of spreadsheets. We have annual reports, uh, quarter reports, for example. You won't want to paste all of this inside of the context for the AI agent. You won't want to place this in the system prompt uh, neither. What you would want to do is use some kind of system like this one from Deep Agents, where the file system references this page. So it's like if we were to have the entire context over here, and then this would be much smaller, just as a reference, just a summary of what is inside of that document. This would be written over here, referencing that page. And then I suppose the whole file system is about how you would bring uh, and relate these data with each other. So we use this to get over this data and bring it back to context of the LM. So enough nerding out about this. If you want to check how this works exactly, go over to Harrison's video inside of the Langchain channel on what are deep agents. So before I move on and show you how to install this on your own computer, I actually built my own version uh, with an AI agent interface. It's in Next.js. And I'll show you further on in the video, which were the prompts that I used to build this. I believe it was like four or five prompts. I didn't actually code this. It was just a way for me to actually see what was the thought process behind. What was the AI thinking to build the entire final research port result? Since this channel is all about building things and if you want to build your own, be it something related to finance or whatever is your niche, you can use AI to do that. So make sure to subscribe to get more videos. So this is the original repository of the Deep Agent Stock Research Assistant. I built my own branch, my own fork of this project because I wanted to use Open Router and not just a local LLM. So the first thing you'll want to do is command space, type in terminal, that CD documents. Let me go inside of my documents and now I'll git clone, copy whatever is in here. This will also be in the description of the video. Don't worry, that will be cloned over to your own project. Now you can CD into to, I believe it'll be deep agents, deep agents. And now in here, let me just code space dot. Now, once you open up your project, you'll want to go inside of the terminal for that project and do a git switch or git checkout switch feature slash open router integration. That'll switch to that branch. And then you'll see some additional files here. For Python, I always like to work inside of virtual environments. So to do that, Python 3.11, venv, venv, and make sure it's 3.11 at least because deep agents only works uh, above this version of Python. Once you type in this command and it's actually dash m vem, vem, the virtual environment will be created. To get inside and use that virtual environment, just use source vem, I believe it's bin and then activate. Yep, at least inside of Mac. Uh, in Windows, I think don't even need to source. It's going over to the activation part. And now in here, you'll want to install all of the packages from the requirements txt. And to do that, let's use pip dash r or is it install dash r requirements txt. As soon as I hit enter, all of these packages will be installed locally in our virtual environment. Okay, that's done. It was pretty fast. Let's clear out the terminal. And now I can actually run it with, no, I can't run it yet. Let's place in our environment variable. So just copy that file, place .env, copy it over here, go over to your open router, create API key uh, for video to make sure I delete it afterwards, copy that, go over in here, just place that in. And now you'll be able to choose the open router model. Let's go over to open router and check, I don't know, like five, we can actually use GPT-5 Nano. It's pretty fast and it's not that dumb. I mean, it's it's okay. You can just copy that and in here specify that model just like that. 
and it should recognize that this is the model that you to use. So now you can just Python and select the research underline agent.py. As soon as you hit enter, once it's running, you should see up here a running on local URL. Click on that, command click, and then in here, let me type in some query. Uh, let's get an example from the main repository. So let's go for the risk assessment. Evaluate the risk of investing in Tesla. Grab that, paste it in there, and let's see. So here's the reason why I created my own interface. As you can see in the console log for this tool, it thinks through everything. It's similar to when you talk to cloud code or cursor and you see all the processes, and then it executes a specific tool. So then you can click on that, maybe a model, a dialogue will open up for you. To, What's going on there? You can't really see that in here because it's all console logged. So I know that it's working. I know that the agent is working. It's using many tools. It's using many different features, search and evaluate the risk of invest Tesla. I just don't know what exact really doing. It's been a while since it's running. So while that let's open up cursor, let me go over to file uh, new window and let me open up my project, open up recent deep agents main. While I was saying that I just got the actual result. So if you want to pause and read through this, it's pretty interesting. I've worked in an asset management firm before, and I know that this is pretty valuable. And I didn't really use a way powerful model. We can check how much was my expense generating this right over here. Let's wait a while. It's like 0 0.007 cents is this. Now let's actually understand what is going on, what the deep agent is doing. So first of all, you get a user query. So analyze Apple stock, for example, then it sends it over to the master agent orchestrator, which is basically it has that system prompt. This is the actual agent that manages everything and has access to all the other tools. Then what it does is understand which step you're in and what else is needed. So for example, you have tools. So you have a tool to just get stock price. That tool will handle only that. It's single responsibility. We'll save that to the file system. And whenever you need to access that specific price, you'll use the file system to do so. And the main agent understands this. It also understands that after it has all the data that it needs, it sends that data over to a sub agents and understands which specialist agent it needs to analyze. So for example, if I were to ask uh, for a specific research based on Warren Buffett, it, for example, it would likely use fundamental analysis more than the other sub agent, which after it's done, it would also be added to file system. This then continues on to the next phase, which we understand the planning. Is the analysis complete? Do we need more information? And then that is sent back as a feedback to the main agent. So it understands, okay, maybe I need to make a risk assessment. And to do so, I have to go inside of the sub agents, uh, use exactly this sub agent to produce this result, send it over to the file system, use the file system. So it's a lot of back and forth. And this is necessary to maintain full context of everything and in a reliable way for the main agent. And then finally, the main agent might send this over to the planning tool. It'll understand that it can then produce the final report. It then produces that and outputs it back using. So that's the entire scope. That's the whole process. It goes through to generate what we see and just makes the research much more valuable. So to use this, it should be pretty simple. I'll just go inside of the folder. And now once I'm inside of the folder, I can dot dash start S8. Once I do that, it should start a backend service, which uses Python and then use Next.js to show all this. With this interface, I can grab that same question of evaluate the risks of investing in Tesla, paste it down here, hit send. And now I'll actually see the step-by-step -step process. So while the AI is analyzing and reasoning, I put that right here, similar to cursor, similar to cloud code. Uh, and then, okay, now I understand that the content is around invoking deep search agent with specialized finance assistant tools. Below. Eventually it'll start using the diff tools. As it starts using those tools, you get kind of a log of that in here. If I click toggle and open this up, you'll see that it searched for uh, Tesla stock inside of Yahoo Finance, I believe. Got that noted in here. So it's the result. Soon enough, it will show other tools that it's using. And there's another process here where it's thinking through. Yet something that I didn't say before, but don't use this as your single analysis for any given stock. This isn't a financial recommendation at all. This is more praising technology and saying, wow, this is actually something cool. And really a thought provocative thing of how we're using cloud code and just using it as the main example to produce things like this. So what we get here is a much better structured 
uh, markdown file that is read and styled as markdown and then separates things just more neatly and you get like the price market cap everything the fundamental analysis technical analysis a risk assessment investment recommendation so maybe it recommending that we just buy and hold and then target price and everything i mean this is pretty interesting and again we're using uh, a much weak model to do this I didn't really commit this to the repository so you can't access at least this one that I built, but I can show you exactly what were the prompts that I used to build it. And if more people require this in the comment section and says that they want to test this out, I'll make a video like explaining how you can run this or really just post a comment explaining how you can run it. So these were my prompts, pretty simple, but basically while running this app, I noticed a lot of logs show up. I mean, I'm not gonna re read through everything, you can pause the video and check this out. I can also place this in the comment section if you want me to. Uh, and then the following prompt was, okay, the interface seems nice, but now actually make it work without dummy data. Should works like, and then I uh, marked the research agent. And then for a while, it just didn't show me the exact uh, thought through process. So I just prompted to actually do that. And then one more prompt here, final prompt here. And, and then I just incremented it to make it visually more appealing. So that's just six prompts that it's to go from uh, a Gradio interface into an XJS, which is much more neat. I mean, it's just a bit harder to execute it than using Gradio. But honestly, I feel like because of the requirements TXT and all that, I, I feel like the, the package manager for a node is better. I mean, <laughs> I don't know if I'm doing something wrong inside of Python, haven't worked with that in a while now, but I just feel like it's much easier inside of Node to track of that you're using and run it in another computer. That is it for today. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Till then.